done soon. Welcome, Welcome to Shade, in the, Shade in the City. I'm Patrice. It snows. And thank you guys for joining us for another review of Before the 90 Days. This is episode 12, I believe it is. It is. It's episode um, 12. We're still going and going and going. Um, so <laughs> thank, thank you, you guys, guys for being here. Sorry for the delay. It actually wasn't because of birthday. Sorry for the puffy eyes. I've been through it. Um, and unfortunately, I just wanted to give a shout out. Rest in peace um, to my grandma, Mary. Um, unfortunately, I lost her two days after my birthday. So that was super unfortunate. Um, so I needed to take some time to deal with that. But um, it's back to business. and. She would have wanted me to be the shadiest bitch that I can be. So, because <laughs> she was um, shady. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, rest in peace. And yes, let's get shady, guys. AKA Gino. He is, they're en route to meet Jasmine's mom and her sister, her beautiful sister here we see with the curly hair. Liz. Um, Gino is nervous because he doesn't want to take off his hat. He introduces himself and is prompted to give the chocolates he bought to Jasmine's mother along with the card that he wrote. Uh, she reads the card and smiles awkwardly. I think this is the top picture here that you see. Um, Basically, she lets us know in the confessional that the age difference is obvious. And um, Jasmine, in the meantime, is asking her little sister, and I didn't catch her name. Did you catch her name? Liz. 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 So she's asking Liz her thoughts of Gino, and she's like, oh, he's, he's nice. He seems nice, I guess. Um, then, basically, Jasmine's mo mom goes on to ask, why doesn't Gino have kids at his age? And so when Jasmine translate, translates uh, for him, um, he's like, you know, I just. It just didn't happen for me. It just didn't happen for me. Um, she questions Jasmine about Gino's age. Um, and she said she was the same age as Jasmine's sister, Liz, who was 18 when Jasmine was born. That Gino was the same age. Yeah, Gino was the same age, sorry. He was 18, basically, when uh, Jasmine was born. Um, he basically says he doesn't see anything wrong with the age gap. You know, a lot of uh, couples not... have an age gap. Um, <laughs> I just love the mom's response. When, you know, Jasmine is uh, translating this, the mom was like, mm-hmm. Basically, uh -huh. the fuck out of here with this bullshit. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, she tells. Basically, Jasmine lies to her mom and says, oh, he's a nice man and loves me. Um, yeah, she thought about the age gap. Tell but... her about him not being comfortable with taking his hat off. As he getting... called this his surrogate hair. His hat is his surrogate hair. I didn't even catch that, but that's smart. That is, yeah. Dude. I, I, the mom. <laughs> so, yeah, she, uh, Jasmine lets uh, her mom know that he's not comfortable taking off his hat um, before prayer. And um, the mom's just sitting at the table. She's like, I don't know, Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like so like, disgusted. Like, why like, would you what did bring you... this man to my house? Like, you don't know who I am, right? And like, he gives old, creepy man vibes. Like, he's disgusting looking. Seriously, and clearly, the mom and the sister picked up on it because I don't understand. Jasmine is literally the only one that 
finds this dude like amazing, attractive, attractive and ma'am, he had to pay. You no, know, that's coochie. not true. Apparently, his ex did too, his ex wife. She's not here to uh, to defend, defend herself. herself, right? <laughs> so we pick up where we left off with uh, Usman and Kimberly, and he, you know, was telling her about Zara and the song. So he lets her know that Zara was a woman that he dated, um, that he met two weeks after Kimberly, um, and started dating her. Um, and Kimberly gets pissed. She's like, why are you telling me this now? You're fucking up my day. And he's like, I'm just trying to be honest. I was loyal to you the entire time. And you're just now telling me. He's like, we just got in a relationship. We were just friends that entire time. And Kimberly feels some type of way because she's like, you know, I thought I was healing your heart this entire time. Apparently they've been talking for a year. Mm -hmm. She's like, I thought I was healing your heart, but you've been dating somebody else now Kimberly I feel like if you saw what Zara looked like you couldn't be mad at him we know men are visual creatures I mean okay clearly you don't know you you didn't get the memo but men are visual creatures okay and Zara's the baddie I mean I'm just I'm just gonna say so yo you said what I said but you don't understand yo how dare you yo I'm out here looking like a fool yo the whole gangster came out of Kim you something came out of her he's from these streets yeah because she said yo um <laughs> so she asked him like you know like how long ago did she break up with you um and he lets her know it was four months ago apparently this pisses her off even more I, and he's telling in, in the confession so I, I i can appreciate how honest Usman is he was like you know and it really broke my heart because i really love that girl and kimberly is just sitting there like Motherfucker, you, you, you forgot I was sitting here? Yeah, you his girlfriend, boo, but he's just not that into you. Okay? He was actually feeling off. Um, well, not even that. He's saying this is before we were in a relationship. Exactly. So, yeah. so, but then I wonder, did he tell Zara about Kimberly? Since he was in a relationship with Zara. I doubt it. Anyways. So, or maybe he I just felt like that's, done. or maybe he just felt like, him, I thought him and Zara were done done. But I mean, while they were dating, because he said that he made, he met Zara two weeks after Kimberly, mm. but maybe he could also felt like he didn't need to tell Zara because him and Kimberly were just friends, according to him. So yeah. um, basically, you know, she's like, oh, if I would have known this a long time ago, you know, basically I would have chucked up the deuces. You're lying. Um, so. <laughs> that's funny in the car she's like maybe we should go our separate ways and he's like what like today like like you go to your hotel room i go to another she's like no in life you're lying again you just want attention bitch you just want attention and we know who's gonna give you a little bit <laughs> you a little bit good luck with that good luck well we get back to Ben and Mahugani. Now, Ben calls his homeboy Jason to update him as promised um, to tell him about the events of the last 24 hours. He tells him about Mahugani's living arrangements and um, about their age mix up. Uh, he feels they need more time to bond um, before he can question her about her honesty. Um, he real, he a special type of stupid, but anyway, so. See, he did notice, he noticed that she had the bunk beds. He said she had a Taurus pamphlet. He's a special type place. of stupid shade squad. No, she's just a special type of scammer, a special <laughs> type of liar. That's what you're going to go with. <laughs> So basically, um, then Mahugani reaches out to Ben and invites him out to meet her two best friends. Uh, she tells us she wants Ben to meet with her family and friends as they only have two weeks to get to know each other. 
um, she thinks sometimes they're uncomfortable around each other and she'd like to get to know him more so she can open up. Her friends, Angie and Elizabeth roll up and uh, Mahugani introduces them. Then they sit down for ice cream and he asks her friends what they like about her. I believe it was a... Uh, not She's Angie. responsible and she's someone that you can trust. Well, yeah, it don't matter who said it. You're right. That's what they said. Yeah, I don't, I don't mm-hmm. know who said it. I don't so know basically, yeah, she's responsible, someone you can trust. And then he asked, well, what should he know about Mahugani as her new boyfriend? And they kind of chuckle. And they let him know that we were never told that you were a boyfriend in our eyes. You were just a friend. That was from abroad and you were just coming to visit. And Mahagani is just like, I mean, well, you never asked. You never asked to be my boyfriend. Say I'm just a friend. You say I'm just a friend. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. <laughs> I'm just saying that's what this scene was giving. Mahagani <laughs> did admit, though, she did admit that they did discuss marriage over the phone. Um, and having a family but, but she said that's like, natural when you want to see what page somebody is on she was like how was I supposed to know how serious he was when he got when we got in person well and I mean I hate to say it but she is 22 years old what did you expect well he didn't expect her to be 22 years old because she's a special type of liar okay I'll give you that one <sighs> Ooh. okay Ever so since basically, we got these titties, y'all, she's turned into a new individual. I think she was like that even before. Well, we don't know because she knew he wasn't paying for the titties before he got there. Yeah. So who knows? Not yet. You know what? You can put on a little front for a little bit if motherfucker doing what you want. So you might be right. Yeah. He asked her, do you love me? And she's like, no, I'm, I'm not in love with you. Basically, um, it's 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 a big it's a big word to me and we haven't lived together long enough for me to be in love with you and he's like but you told me all the time like over the phone that you love me and I'm your life and she's just like it is what well, it is apparently basically. people talk a lot of shit over the phone is what we're learning. <laughs> it, that's what we're learning and these last yeah. two scenes, people t- tell you and promise you a lot of shit over phone yeah she's like I have a lot of doubts and that's just that's just what it is he wants to go into a further and discuss these doubts. And him and is like, I'm sleepy. Let's talk about this later. Shoo boo, shoo. <laughs> Sends him into the, to the other room where I think there was Superman or Spider-Man covered some shit. Okay, and called her babies in the bed. No, that, was, yeah, that was the baby's room that she sent him in the little, that he was sleeping on a, a whole twin, not a, a toddler bed. Then, uh, you know, the camera crew go to check on Mike. You know, they're like, are you okay? He's like, no, not really. I am confused. I don't understand what's going on. I'm ready to just leave. I, I don't want to be, I don't even want to be here. He wants to know what, what, what did she say? Um, what the what doubts she, are? She has reservations or she has, and he wants to know. And she's like, no, I'm sleepy. I don't want to talk about that. Not right yeah. now. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And he's all confused over this sudden shift in behavior. And he's on the twin size bed. With the toddler bed. Spider-Man covers like, or whatever. That's just hard. Okay. <sighs> so Memphis, she goes to check on Gino. Um, Jesus Christ. Memphis goes to check on Hamza. And, um, you know, apparently things have been off. So she asked him, you know, how are you feeling? He says, like, he's not feeling too good. He's feeling bad. Um, She feels like he initially understood when she explained what happened with the ex-husband. But it's been a couple of days and he been acting kind of funny. He been acting a little salty. Mm -hmm. So she decides that it's best for them to go see a translator. So they can have a clear understanding of what's going on and where she's coming from and where he's coming from. Um, so she said that, uh, 
she wants to go and conversate. Oh yeah, that's what she said. With, 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 with uh the translator. I, I don't know how the hell she got on national TV and said the word conversate, ma'am. It's converse. Nobody told yeah. you it is Better converse. Live. Okay, so they sit down with the translator, and Hamza immediately expresses his concerns. I don't think it's normal that you know she's staying over the ex's house for four days. Like I don't know about her culture, but that's not how the fuck we do it here. That's some weird shit, basically. And he's like, he's like, what if one day we argue and you know now she want to go to her ex's house? Ex- Exactly. And she's like, no, never. I would never do that. And, you know, he's like, but you still got a relationship with your ex-husband. And understandably, she's like, well, I'd still, I have to have a relationship because he's the father of my children. Right. And she starts getting angry, starts yelling. He like, look, tell her, look, I don't like that shit. That shit she doing right there. I don't like that. (laughs) That That's a good one. I fuck with that shit. She's like, what? You don't like when I yell? You don't like when I yell? Like, we don't like when you talk. Oh my God. The, thank you. The voice. <laughs> like, <laughs> so she's like, you know, I just want him to understand how much I'm doing for this relationship, how much I sacrifice, you know, my friends and my family, you know, they have concerns about you and I'm going against what they said, but you have concerns yourself, but you're going against your fucking self. Okay. Um, Hamza gets up and, you know, gives her kiss, um, I guess, because of what she just said. He, Hamza, please just let this bitch go. Just send her back to the U.S. packing. It would be amazing. That's for everybody. But every time we think we think they're going to drop, he just, you know, shrivel right back up. They're just Well, apparently they cleared the air. They both feel better about what, you know, happened and. I guess they going on in a merry little way. Oh, yeah. Jasmine and Gino. Um, the mom is not petty like I am, apparently, because if you tell me he got a problem with his hat on at the table and I don't like him, I ain't really fucking with him like that. I'm be like, no, rules are I'm gonna rules. need you to take that hat off, bro. This is how we do it at my house. Yeah, tell me to take that yeah, hat off. Respect. But she was like, it's fine if it makes him feel comfortable. So be it. She's much nicer than I am or would be, you know, as a mom and sitting down with my child's significant other. Anyways, um, you know, Gino is worried that the mom does not like him, but he does feel like he needs her approval. As Jasmine told him plenty of times, my mom needs to approve this or it ain't going to happen. And really, Jasmine, I feel like you would really be dodging a bullet, but that's not either here nor there. So Basically, um, he asked the mom, has Jasmine had a lot of boyfriends because she's so beautiful? And the mom is like, no, because I, like I was strict and I made sure she she wasn't allowed to have a boyfriend. She's yeah, like, can we change yeah, the subject, exactly. please? Like, why is this something you're asking? That's weird. That is weird. That's, you're just, he's just awkward. Socially awkward. And he looks awkward. He's just, oh God, he just screams dirty old man. So basically, you know, she's like, okay, are we done here? Like, can we get up from the table? Like, this is just super awkward. Let's go sit down. You know, they go through some pictures. He shows pictures of, she, I'm sorry, she shows pictures of Jasmine when she was younger. Uh, she showed a picture when she was in the second grade and she's like, Oh my God, Gina, I think you were married at this time. Yo, that's weird. (laughs) That's That's weird. weird. So basically, um, Gina lets it be known that, um, hey, basically like, can you translate, you know, I really love your daughter and I would appreciate your blessing um, to ask her to marry me. The mom does mom, not look you happy. Is hesitant as all hell, and it's like she does I don't not want look to, happy. No. no, she looks like she felt like she was put on the spot, and she gonna say whatever the fuck she gonna say now, and then call Jasmine later, like, which I really don't approve, and I don't think you should do this. But 
you know, she asked Jasmine, like, do you really want to leave and go to another country? And Jasmine's like, yeah, like, you know, she thought about it. She wants to go. She loves him. And a good man. He's committed, even though he showed, shared my titties with someone else. Exactly. So, you know, the mom is like, you know, Jasmine is my treasure and you need to take, you need to take good care of her. You know what I mean? So apparently he got her approval. Um, it, it didn't seem like it was genuine, but he did get it. Um, and he did what she thought was making her daughter happy, but she, she's exactly. Not- I think it's going to be a phone call later where she's like, bitch. Oh, she's fly. First of all, I'm going to call y'all out because I'm more sad that y'all let me walk around for more than 12 episodes and let me spell this girl name wrong the whole time. <laughs> nobody, nobody thought to mention that Jimena might be with an X and not a J. Just saying. So clearly y'all thought it was spelled correctly, just like me. So they was paying attention to what we were saying, not what we were spelling. Okay. I ain't mad at y'all. <laughs> so we see Mike and Jimena. Um, well, not even Jimena, more like Mike. He calls up his friend, John. We met him earlier, like the first, first or second episode um, with his fiance, Nelsey. And basically he calls him to express his frustrations with Jimena. And then he tells him how, He's sleeping on the toddler bed. And John tells him he needs to bring his ass back to New York. Mike says he still feels that there is hope, even though he hears what he says, he still feels there's hope and hopes that maybe his fiance, Nelsey, can help translate in Spanish to speak so, uh, to speak to Jimena so they can have a better understanding. Of Make sure he ain't missing anything. Um... I guess. And I mean, that was pretty much it, y'all, because that was it's foolery. Mike just still he is don't want to face the truth that basically John lets him also know, look, I don't know what type of light at the end of the tunnel you're looking for, but there isn't one. Get your ass back on the plane to New York. This bitch told you that she don't want she don't love you. She don't want to be um, you to be attentive and lovey dovey with her. And who the fuck does that when they in a long distance relationship? Not even that. She got you sleeping in the kids' room. I'm just saying. Basically, and he 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 spelled it out for him. He was like, "You did all this shit for her during a pandemic. Time, energy, money. Who was benefiting? Just her. Basically. Just her. So I feel that I should um let nails do this, but i was shocked I I, about I, it and I she, just knew you she, wanted to get up in Ben's ass. I was gonna say she's not gonna give it do it the right justice because for whatever reason she feels sorry for this motherfucker and I don't. So Ben <laughs> is looking at old texts from mahogany to make sure that he's not losing his damn mind, right? He shows us examples of old texts that she sent him, and he says he didn't want to embarrass her in front of her friends, so he called her after their meetup and invited her on a trip but we did see the text where she said she loves him and she wanted to have children with him and he would be a great father so mahugani says she did tell ben she loves him but never said they were together they're taking an awkward drive off to this spot that he's picked or whatever the case may be um and he begins to notice that there's no traffic signals or signs it'd be so, like that another yeah that would have kind of scared me too but um, <laughs> then she asks about whether he knows any other languages and then he tells her he knows hebrew then she asked him on his opinion about jesus which i love jesus we all you know love jesus um and how he was able to endure so much suffering. Um, They start having their, you know, spiritual conversation, which brings them together. They arrive at the hotel in the check-in, Mahogany, or I'm sorry, Mahugani, immediately asks, what's the room arrangements? She wants to make sure that they have two separate rooms. And, um, you know, they let her know that that's what it is. And apparently the plan is to visit the sand dunes the next day. And all I'm going to say is, 
at what point is this, I guess this is supposed to be her slap on the hand. I'm going to take you on a trip. Um, even though I feel like you lying to me and you've been lying to me and you lied in front of your friends or, and this is when I, this goes, what I will say is Nels has always told me this all my life. Men love bitches. And this was a perfect example, how you can be a complete asshole and a complete bitch. And you still got this motherfucker running behind you. Look at Mike and Jimena. Look at Usman and uh, Kimberly, the complete opposite. Who's running behind who? Yeah, no, Men, it's crazy. They love bitches. And what, anything you want to add? I will give her credit for saying oh, that she didn't go. tell him. She didn't tell him, but she did say that things are a lot different through text versus in person. Um, although I can't give her too much credit for that because it took her a few days to even meet him in person to even realize there was a difference. But so um, it seems like Hamza has a surprise for Memphis. Um, he takes her to Hamam's Reba. Um, yeah, it's like an old historical spot. Yeah, I guess like old town, whatever, you know, city you live in. It's like where old houses were. And he said he wants to show her how people used to live like back in the day. So he does feel like, you know, they've been getting closer ever since they sat down and spoke with the translator. So apparently that was a great idea. Um, you know, they cleared the air and, um, you know, he takes her to this area and just tells her, hey, wait here. Um, he's gone for a little minute. It seemed like Memphis is worried. She's like, is there snakes? I see wild animals and all types of shit. And Hamza comes out of nowhere, all white little outfit. He done changed his clothes. I don't know where the hell he went to change his clothes. But he done changed his clothes. He didn't get dirty out there, but go ahead, Hamza. Right. <laughs> um, and then he, you know, comes to get her. She's like, oh, okay, you looking nice. And he takes her onto this cliff. And you know what? Let, let me pull it up for y'all. Let me pull it up for y'all because I got to show you because I felt like Hamza did pretty damn good. Okay. He proposed y'all with this. Okay. That was nice. I think he did pretty damn well. Okay. I don't, for somebody who ain't working, somebody who ain't working, um, Hamza, good job. You definitely did a lot better than Gino. Okay. Um, he proposed and, you know, I guess at first she was like, well, like, do I want to say yes? She saw that ring and she's like, yes, I will. Mm -hmm. I will marry you. <laughs> Whatever you want. You want me to drop him Charles right here? <laughs> um, but yeah, she, she agreed. And, um, yeah, I mean, we shall see what happens, but good job. Hamza. I look. I guess he manned up a little bit, but you still marrying a man child. That's, I mean, this is for real. So she is on the balcony trying to teach him how to do the merengue. And he is like, who is that? I'm, what? You never heard of the merengue? Like, what? Who is that really? So they come inside, and, you know, I guess he's like over the moon because. He got the mom's blessing. You know, he wants to propose in a couple of days. He's trying to learn how to dance and he sucks at it. But Jasmine loves it as she does with everything this corny nigga does. Um, you know, he feels like their bond is getting stronger and he wants to propose in the next few days. So he goes outside and calls his, I thought he said friend, but then later on he said brother. So we're going to say brother friend, Tony. Yes. Um, and you know, he lets Tony know, you know, that they have some problems, um, uh, because he was texting his ex, sending her pictures that he shouldn't have been. And Tony's just like, why would you be doing that? Like, but I mean, he didn't really get in his ass, like really like he should have. Yeah, exactly. Um, and he lets Tony know, you know, Hey, you know, I plan to propose. Um, and Tony's like, are you sure you want to do that? It's only been a couple of weeks. And if y'all arguing in paradise, you sure? Like, but what's like Tony a is, forewarning? This is what he said. Right. This is as good as it gets. But my thing is, Tony, 
you did hear him say that they were arguing because of some shit that your homeboy slash brother did, right? So I feel like the issue is not really Jasmine and whatever needs to be worked on, it needs to be worked on with Gino, okay? So maybe you need to tell him to get his shit together, okay? Because the arguing is because of him talking to his fucking ex and pictures and shit. So basically, you know, Gino was like, you know, I understand his concerns, but everybody argues and Gino seemed like he all in. He gonna he gonna he gonna pop the question, but uh, he need to be taking some tips from from Hamza with the ring shopping. Okay. Okay, Shade Squad. Well, damn, you didn't have to down it like that, nails. I mean, Jesus, I knew it was a lot. But... I gotta prepare myself. So Ben and Mahugani are enjoying themselves at the sand dunes. They are just laughing, as you can see in the bottom right having a great time, living a best life. That's, a, that's actually a really good picture, Trace. Go on. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and then he has dinner set up on the beach for her, top left. Um, And as they're sitting down and trying to get romantic, and I, I thought, it, I mean, I guess they are trying to get to know each other better, but it seemed like such a romantic dinner. I didn't know why she wanted to bring this up. Um, but she proceeds to ask him why his first marriage ended. Um, he explains to her that things didn't work out because they weren't able to be themselves. Um, and basically they weren't perfect. And in the church that they were going to, they were just supposed to be perfect at all times and nobody had any flaws and that's not who they were. So yeah, so they ignored a lot of their problems. Um, so basically then she asked him like, well, have you ever dated anybody younger? And then he's like, well, yeah, I was you know engaged to a 27 year old um but that didn't work out because you know she couldn't accept my kids and my whole guy is like you got a lot of shit with you that she's i didn't like, so it's making, she, it's she's making like, me she's like, so, you differently well she's like she's like you know in these past relationships you're saying you know what happened and it was her it was her so are you just perfect She's like, I can't imagine a pastor not taking accountability. I said, go ahead, Mahugani. And he's telling us in the confessional, not her. Or no, did he tell her that he doesn't feel the need? He said to... he wasn't going to defend himself or his past. Yeah, That's he's not going to defend his past. Um, and he thinks it's real funny that she asking all these questions and talking all this shit. Well, her when there's a lot of holes. Her goddamn story. Mm -hmm. Go. Tell us how you really fucking feel, goddamn it. Jesus. Time been. <laughs> We've been waiting for you to arrive to the party. Well, Uzman goes and attempts to return Kim's gifts um, as she I has. I think she sends a text saying that she don't trust him and she they should go their separate ways for life. For life. <laughs> they ain't for lifers, y'all. They ain't for lifers. And so, you know, he's like, and she's just like, oh, how could you do this to me? And why did you lie to me? I'm not she says, I'm not mad about the girlfriend. I'm mad that when I told him I was follow, falling in love with him, if he would have told me he had a girlfriend, I would have backed off. Nels, what did you say earlier? What? Well, no, I don't believe she would have backed off. But You're lying. I can understand her being <laughs> upset that he didn't tell her. The sooner. truth. And give her a choice. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's like, oh, we were just friends at the time, but that's clearly bullshit because she wasn't aware that y'all were friends. So I'm sure she was talking to you different than friends. So I can understand where she's coming from with that. Um, you should have let her know that you were in a relationship and then when you broke it off or when the other girl broke up with you, then that's a totally different story. But you're you were leading her on. So I can understand where she's coming from with that. 
Well, y'all, just look like it might be the end of Usman and Kimberly. That I don't believe. He says he can't deal with it. It reminds him too much of his ex-wife, and he does not want to get into this SHIT again. And plus, we we all know, and as he admitted in a confessional, he still has a thing for Zara. So Zara's a baddie, though. So we shall okay. see. So some like it hot. Some like it spicy. Jimena don't like it at all. She just like the money. Okay. Well, we say green is for the green is for the money, gold is for the honey. Um, so <laughs> Mike and Jimena, he sets up this conversation with uh, Jimena and Nelsie. Jimena is not happy about this. She's annoyed. Um, that because Mike she doesn't feel like they should be discussing their problems with, with other people. Friends. Um, he call, so basically he calls her only for Jimena to not even want to get on the phone, like on the video call with her. She didn't even really want to say hello. Um, basically, he starts explaining to Nelsie that Jimena just came out of nowhere and suddenly doesn't love him and is com he's confused by it all. Um, Jimena says love is a very big word for her, guys. But so she was using it already, it guys. Big word when you accepted your proposal, it wasn't a big word when I'm sure you had to, when you asked him for some money for the titties the first time and he said no. And after you asked him. It's a big word, but she was already using it. Mm. Anyway, she needs more time. It's giving me Mahagani. Mm. No, Jimena is much worse. She's to the 10th power. Um, no, 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 she is. I'm just talking about this love word. She oh, is okay. Um, so Nelsie explains to Jimena that uh, she's acting very differently than when they first met. Um, and Jimena starts to go in to talk about how he watches her when he, she's asleep. And that's creepy as hell, which that is some creepy shit. Um, and then, you know, he's like, but I do that because I'm admiring her. And Nelsie tries to explain to her. And then she's like, oh, and there's it's just several other degenerate, slow, well, piggish Nelsie, things. That Nelsie, asked her, Nelsie asked her, what do you like about him? And instead of her explaining what she likes about him, she explains what she doesn't like about him she explained that he's slobbish he's and nasty. piggish and basically you know Nelsie relates to him that relates to him that like she's just not happy with you she's not happy with you she's disgusted by you and you need to be on the first thing smoking up out of there also Hamina lets her know that she was working until she met Mike and then she quit her job. So Mike has been supporting her entire life, paying all her bills, paying her rent, taking care of everything. And Lord Mike, I mean, we knew that, but you no, know, it's Lord Mike and Lord Jimena. First of all, Mike, you're a dumbass for doing it. And Jimena, if this is really the life you wanted to live, bitch, you're a dumbass for fucking saying all this fucked up shit and losing it, you dumbass. So basically, you know, she lets him know that Jimena is not here for the right reasons. Um, she's disgusted by you. She don't like you. Um, and he says, you know, he's probably going to look for the next flight. As, as he should. And then he gets off the phone with Nelsie and he's like, you know, I um, want to give you your space that you need. But I, I you know, I still want to talk to you like as friends. And she's like, are you ending things with me? Bitch, did you, did you think he shouldn't? What exactly are you offering? Like, like his homeboy, John said, who is benefiting from this relationship? It's, it's, it's one-sided. It's very one-sided super one-sided okay y'all so thank you guys for joining us for another review of before the 90 days we are now yes. on episode 12 and we are still going we're still going and you know what looking at the preview for next episode i kind of want to still go because 
I would be mad if I had to wait to find out what the hell happens. You know, so you know they love these cliffhangers. He's fed up with Mahugani. He's like, I'm tired of this. Um, Ella out here cheating on Johnny. She done had sex with somebody, y'all. Girl, she and, picking up the cookies. And Hyatt over here questioning Memphis about her her psychological issues and things she got going and, on. And, and Memphis is not here for it. She looked like she ready to read Hyatt, which, let me say something. I don't know how that's going to boil over with uh, Hamza because we know Hamza loved his mom. Mama, right? So we shall see y'all. But yeah, no, they keep it coming. Oh, and, and we learned that Hamena. You know, even though Mike is ready to break up with her, she he, she like, well, you know, maybe you can just stay and nigga, she wants you to fund that shit. All the shit she she doing, she wants you to fund it. And and for you to sleep on the toddler bed while you do it. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so catch us next Sunday, because clearly we'll be back for episode 13 of Before the 90 Days. So please make sure that you guys like. You comment, subscribe, and you hit the notification bell. And make sure you follow us on all platforms. And we'll catch you next week and for another episode of Before the 90 Days. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for all the subscribes, by the way. We can yes, thank you, Shade grow, Family. We love we you. Love you, Shade Family. Good night. Front, back, side to side. Make sure you go like and subscribe. Eye front, back, side to side. Make sure you go like and subscribe. Hey.